Hello, hello, more Dimmers here and welcome to the super final of Earthings Masters. We have Taimur Rajabov and Levon Aronian in the final. First day of the final, uh, Taimur Rajabov won two and a half to one and a half. So that means in the second day of the super final, Levon Aronian has to be aggressive and have to play for the win. Uh, and this is the first game and the most interesting and exciting game, maybe even all, all of the tournament. So without further ado, let's see what happened on the board. Levon Aronian with the white pieces open with e4. We have e5, knight f3, knight c6, uh, bishop c4, Italian game. We have Gioco Piano, so silent and quiet game. Uh, we have c3, we have knight f6 and now d3, the main line. We have the the castle, castle, and now d5 more aggressive or d6 can be played. Rajabov went for d6, more solid line. Uh, and now there are um, a lot of moves which white actually uh, can play. So uh, all of these are very standard duo copiano uh, ideas and they can be played, you know, with the different moves order. Bishop b3 can be played. This is the main idea here. Knight b2, of course, can be played. Uh, h3, just to pre prevent the bishop of coming to g4, also is an idea. Rook e1, defending e4 and pushing the d4 pawn, also is an idea. Uh, also, uh, e4 is an idea uh, just to prevent any, any b5 moves in the future. And also, b4 is an idea. So, as you already see, all of this is possible. However, here Levon Aronian went for bishop g5. Uh, and okay, we have h6, bishop h4. Now we have g5, weakening the pawn structure uh, in the front of the king. We have bishop g3 and now a5, making a space for the bishop on a7. We have rook e1, now defending the pawn on e4, preparing d4. And now rook e8, which is quite a novelty here, uh, and it wasn't played on the top level. We have knight b to d2. Now this knight is uh, going probably uh, to some of the outposts. So very standard maneuver in Gioco Piano. We have bishop a7 and now knight f1 as planned. We have bishop e6 now challenging this bishop, uh, moving the bishop from this diagonal or forcing to exchange. Uh, but we have bishop b5 avoiding bishop d7. So now following that also and now knight e3 as planned. Knight e7 asking to exchange the light squares bishop, but uh, Levon Aronian is not interested uh, on that term. So he played a4 saying, if you exchange, I'm gonna have the semi open um, a file. Uh, we have c6 now. And now bishop goes back to c4. Uh, we have knight g6. Now this knight is heading to very nice outpost on the f4. And now queen c2. Uh, queen c2 actually is a very sneaky move because it's setting up the queen on c2. And in the future, maybe together with the bishop on, the, uh, on this diagonal can be very, very dangerous. Especially after d4 and e5 moves. We have knight f4 as planned. And now rook a to d1, supporting d4. Uh, so what I said, this d4 and e5 idea can be very, very strong. We have queen e7. And now d4 actually is losing the, the pawn uh, as the queen and the rook are pointing on e4. Uh, but we have d4 anyway. So Levon Aronian all in. He has to win at least one game. Uh, so why not to do it with what white pieces? We have d4. E takes on d4. Uh, and now first bishop f4 g takes on f4 and now the most natural way to continue would be of course knight f5 just to avoiding to losing the piece uh, and then after bishop f5 e takes on f5 the queen is under attack so queen f8 uh, and then c takes on d4 material is equal the position of the uh, black king is a slightly worse however uh, look at this f file this this would be very interesting to have this this chain on the f file however the position is still very complicated 
played and could be played, the material is completely equal. However, we have e5, Levon Aronian sacrificed the piece to open the diagonal for the queen. Uh, but Teymur Rajabov has his chance here to refute all this attack. How to do that? There is only one way, believe me or not, the winning move in this position is actually d3. Now, why? Uh, I will show you why. d3, uh, and now the point is that after queen d3, this pawn is uh, gonna take the knight. And now after f takes on e3, queen g6, king h8, uh, queen h6, knight h7, bishop d3, threatening the checkmate on h7, but now after e takes on f2, uh, and if king f1, we're gonna have the promotion first. And now there is the difference because after f6, uh, e takes on f6, queen can go to f7. Uh, and now knight g5 doesn't work because queen f6, queen f6 delivers the check and force white to exchange the queen. So queen f6, uh, and then we're gonna have knight f6, and with extra rook and extra uh, one piece, the bishop, of course, black is completely winning here. So after e takes on f2, also white could try play uh, king h1, but it doesn't work as well because of the first promotion, uh, and then f6 uh, works uh, as a charm because this time, if the pawn is taken, then we're gonna have the checkmate on the first rank. So d3 is winning here. However, we have d takes on e3. Now, what is the difference? Uh, the difference is that the pawn is still on f4. So this is what happened in the game. Uh, and now Levon Aronian has the winning continuation. Queen g6 with the check. We have king h8, queen h6, knight h7, bishop d3. So uh, very much the same. E takes on f2, sacrificing uh, the another piece. We have king f1. And and now, uh, of course, promotion, uh, rook e1, and now what is the difference? The pawn on f4. So all of this, you know, f6 doesn't work now because after e takes on f6, queen f7, knight g5, this time it works because you don't come with to f6 with the check because there is the pawn on f4. What just happened? This is just incredible. So, for example, uh, now rook e1, king e1, rook e8, and after king f1, uh, the queen has to be moved, uh, queen g8, but now we're gonna have bishop h7, and it's completely winning for white now. Uh, the queen has to be moved, so queen f8, but now knight f7 with the check. There is only one move, queen f7, and now bishop g6 with the check, uh, king g8, bishop f7, king f7, queen g7, and after king e6, this pawn gonna promote and win the game. Uh, if the if the rook is moved uh, anywhere, uh, then of course we're gonna have promotion and this gonna be the end game with the queen against two bishops, completely winning for white. So f6 immediately doesn't work, but Taimur Rajabov played extremely sneaky move now and he played bishop f5, sacrificing uh, the bishop or maybe giving back the material. Uh, why to do that? We have bishop f5, so all the threats are still on the board. However, there is the huge difference. This bishop, yes, it's still on this diagonal, but not on this diagonal anymore. What is the difference? Because the bishop was guarding c4 and c4 is the key square here in this variation because now uh, Teymur Rajabov played f6. We have e takes on f6 with the attack on the queen, so queen f7. And this is the critical moment of the game where you can actually pause the video and find the winning continuation for white. While I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? First, I will show you uh, the ambulance line. Uh, Bishop h7. Bishop h7 is just amazing because now uh, this c4 square is very important. Queen c4 delivers actually the checkmate together with the bishop. It's just incredible. And this is ambulance line because it delivers the checkmate, called the ambulance, 
A, uh, but not for white. Bishop d3 with the check. Boom! This is the ambulance line and uh, this comes from the aim chess advertising uh, where they show the meme in the in their advertising and it's pretty funny one and um, yeah however queen c4 of course is not it's not winning for black but queen h7 would win the game because now black gonna have extra rook and winning the game so this doesn't work so how to win the game it looks like okay knight g5 is winning uh, and now queen is under attack if the queen moves then we're gonna have the checkmate the problem is now queen c4 that would be real checkmate because bishop d3 and the bishop is not defended here so queen d3 and we would have the checkmate extremely uh interesting chess here so this doesn't work so knight g5 doesn't work bishop h7 doesn't work so what would work we have two ways here to win that game first is first just exchange the rooks um so exchange the rooks and then play very important move uh, just to cover this c4 square b3 and now of course the queen cannot take uh because we're gonna have the checkmate on g7 and also a uh, knight g5 is coming so what black can try is rook g8 taking under control g5 however then we're gonna have h4 h5 uh, so whatever black plays here doesn't really matter uh, if the queen uh, takes on b3 we're gonna have another checkmate on h7 so uh, it's not possible so for example bishop e3 uh moving the bishop but it doesn't matter what uh, black plays because we're gonna have h5 follow by bishop g6 it's completely winning uh even if the queen just anticipate that play something like queen c7 then still bishop g6 is winning the game followed by f7 and checkmate on the on the h7 a uh, rook f8 defending um f7 doesn't work because bishop h7 and now after queen h7 queen f8 uh queen g8 queen h6 and after uh queen h7 queen g6 uh, forcing to exchange the queens if black doesn't want to then still have to because knight jumps to g5 and we're gonna have the checkmate in next two moves so queen g6 is actually forced h takes on g6 and now the plan is very simple bring the knight to e6 play um, f7 and promote to the queen nothing can be done black gonna be too slow uh, king g8 also doesn't work because knight e6 and as you already see uh, the knight controls all of these squares around uh so doesn't really matter f7 king h8 is the only move and we are gonna have the checkmate so this was one of the ways to actually uh win the game and another after h5 uh rook g7 uh it giving back the material uh and it still doesn't work uh it's nothing forcing here but f takes on g7 and after queen g7 which is of course forced uh queen d6 winning one pawn and then also winning another pawn uh, maybe black can try to exchange the queens and with the attack on the on the bishop but then queen b8 with the check if the king comes to g7 then we're gonna take another pawn win the check uh if not knight f8 uh then bishop d3 simply um, move the bishop uh from the harm way and win the pawn and even if uh b5 is played it doesn't really matter because uh white gonna win second pawn again this pawn cannot be taken because the knight is hanging and so on so that was the one way of winning this position so uh you can just exchange you can play b3 just to take under control uh c4 and play h4 h5 and another way of winning that is second way is avoiding uh, to exchange the rooks playing rook d1 which looks like very very slow but it's attacking this uh, this pawn if d5 then black will never uh, you know have the counter play on c4 so that's not possible if rook e to the d8 uh, then yes this pawn is defended but now of course the knight can jump to g5 and there is no checkmate here because the bishop can retreat as the rook controls d3 as well
and it's of course game over uh, maybe queen g8 just to you know still keep control on over over h7 but now simply knight h7 uh, and even if black brings the rook to the seven rank to defense then we're gonna have knight f8 with the check uh, rook h7 and now knight g6 it's the only move uh, saving move the legal move is uh, queen g6 and white gonna win the queen so we have the queen for the rook of course this is still winning for white so this is another way of winning a rook d1 which looks very slow win this pawn or if black defends then uh, simply knight g5 and this rook uh, defense d3 so these were the ways to actually continue however levon aronian play rook e6 which is very very logical because it prevents black from playing to c4 however this is losing move because because now uh, Temur Rajabov plays simply rook e6 and now after knight g5 which was played uh, he just played took this pawn on f6 and now black has just too much material uh, we have knight f7 winning the queen uh, but after exchanging everything as you already see we have the queen for the two rooks and the bishops and black have completely uh, winning endgame but it's not that easy for now we have queen f6 so levon aronian last chance to draw this game is actually to make the perpetual check so we have king g8 queen g6 rook g7 we have queen e6 with the check uh, rook f7 uh, queen g6 king f8 and now winning the pawn on d6 we have king g7 and now queen e5 with the check king g6 queen e6 king g7 queen e5 king g6 queen e6 and now you can pause the video one more time and show the winning continuation for Taimur Rajabov. So black have the winning continuation here uh, while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So the winning continuation is actually rook f6. And now what is the idea? There is no more perpetual check. If queen e4, we're gonna have king h6. There are no more checks. So black gonna have the time to consolidate the position, connect the rooks and so on. So that's the one of the ideas. And if queen g4, it's not gonna work because the king can escape uh, this way, but not yet because... Uh, king f7 actually would be the draw because the queen still can come to d7 so the way to do is king h6 again so this was uh, the most important continuation rook f6 and then king h6 this rook and uh, the, the king works really nice and now doesn't really matter what um, what white plays if white delivers uh, another checks on the dark squares or on the, the light squares doesn't matter king g7 and now black can go uh, deliver the check on the dark square or on the on the light square but uh, black gonna have the opposite escape path so this way uh, this is the one of the way uh, ways and another um, this is this way to to actually escape on the light squares on the dark squares opposite so for example on the dark squares i will show you the the light squares now king f7 and you don't really have uh, more checks here uh, king e6 and now uh, queen e2 bishop e3 even improving the position of the bishop and it's uh, and it's all over because the king can go to d7 and as i said uh, just escape behind the protection of the of the pawns and and consolidate and win uh, the game so that was possible however we have king g7 a uh, queen e five and the game ended with a draw believe me or not so double edge in my opinion i think the best game of this tournament i enjoyed it a, a, a lot however it ended with a draw so it didn't you know catch the attention of the of the youtubers but it was really really sharp and beautiful game and uh, very very rich and i would like show you um the, what just happened in other games so the second game was won by Taimur Rajabov, but the game was just uh quite uh, i cannot say boring 
boring, it was still exciting, but with the extra pawn, Temura Jabov just grind uh, with in the opposite uh, bishop's endgame. Uh, they had the, the rooks also, so that was a very nice technique to win the game, but this, this was just grinding without any fireworks, and the third game ended with the draw, uh, so it ended after three games, because even if Levon Aronian wins the the last game, uh, then we would have uh, Teimur Rajabov who won the first mini match. So Teimur Rajabov, congratulations, won the finals of the Earthings Masters, and we also had the match for the third place where Maxim Vashil Lagraf won two games, Daniel Dubov won one game, and it ended two and a half to one and a half uh, to Maxim Vashil Lagraf. So he got the third place of this tournament. So that was the the tour tournament we ended the last the tournament of 2020 with the final in the 2021st and if you like this video press like if for some reason you don't like it press unlike and if you don't want to miss other videos on my channel press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one